the book of first Corinthians chapter 9 the verse is 24 to 27 and it says do you not know that those who run in a race all run but one receives the prize Run in such a way that you may obtain it. So here, Paul is telling us that we who are alive right now, the life we are living in, it is like we are living a life. We are like the people who are like in a race or competing of something. And then he says, now this I do for the gospel. Sorry. Uh, and everyone, verse 25, and everyone who competes for the praise is temperate in all things. Or oh, everyone who competes for the praise is ready to do all things or to face all consequences. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but for we, for, for we, for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus not with uncertainty, Thus I fight not as one who beats the air. So here Paul tells us that it is like, for example, we are in the world that is full of competitions. In this world, when you give your life to Christ, there are a lot of temptations you may find in life. A lot of them may increase. But it says in this life you're living in or in this race that you are running, run. Don't be like someone who runs with uncertainty or someone who does not know why you are running a race, or someone who does not know the gift that you're going to do what, the gift that you're going to get after you win a race. So for him, he says that when you are running, run being able to face whatever you're going to, to face in life. And then he says, therefore, for him he runs not with uncertainty, thus he fight not as one who beats the air. So most times, there is a way as we Christians will live in our lives and we end up wasting our time. There is someone who can say, ah, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I live a good life. But when you look into that person's into that person's life, the truth is that person's life is working for salvation by works and not by faith. He only does by works and then without faith. And then we have someone who works for salvation by faith without what without works of which the bible says all that is what is dead so he tells us to be ready to face all consequences let us be like someone who knows the reason as to why they are in a race in verse 27 he says but i discipline my body and bring it into subjection Rest when I, uh, but i discipline my body and bring it into subjection lest when i have preached to others I myself become disqualified. So here Paul is telling us that as we continue serving the Lord in these last days, the more you continue doing all whatever you're doing for the Lord, make sure that all things you preach or all things you teach to the people of God, make sure that you also bring your body into subjection. Make sure that everything you teach, you make sure that your body is not found the counterfeit of it or is not found when it is not following what you're teaching. So in all everything that we teach, or when we go out there, there are different people we meet, and we all of us, our intention is to widen the kingdom of God. So whenever we preach or whenever we teach something to the men of God, let us make sure that whatever we are going to teach them, we ourselves are also in practice of it, or we do it in order not to be disqualified, because time will come, when we are before the throne of God, and then he will say, you will say, take away, you wicked people, I never knew you, but yet you wasted all your time preaching, teaching, what and what. Kumbe, you had forgotten that what you were teaching other people, you were not putting it into practice. So for you, in order your works not to be of no use, you have to make sure that whatever you read, you put it into practice before you go and teach it to other people. And then in James chapter 4, verse 14, the Bible says, the Bible says, whereas you do not know that will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. So here, 
Paul is telling us that in this life we are living, some people may say, because I remember I had a friend, and then there is a certain woman who came to preach to us the gospel, and then my friend mentioned the statement, and he said that, uh, for us, we appreciate your message, your preaching, but since we are still youths, this is the time we have to enjoy life. And then when we become old, or when we come into our old age, that's when we shall be saved. When I listen to this statement, it matched to this scripture that says that whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. That brings in mind that even though you put some excuses, whether you are still a youth or whether you are still doing something, what you have to remember is that no one knows the time when you go in. You may say that, ah, I'm waiting for Christ. The truth is you may wait for Christ and he may not come now, but for you may die now. And remember the Bible says that God is not pleased with someone who dies unrighteous because the moment you die when you're not righteous, your chapter has been closed. You will just be waiting for the word, for the second resurrection of the wicked or the second resurrection of damnation. So in everything we do, in the life we are living in today. Let us make sure that we are living a life as if Christ is coming back today. Everything you do, do it asking yourself in your heart. If Christ comes back now, now, am I qualified? Or if I go out there as I'm, I'm moving and then uncertainly I get an accident or I get a problem, the time I die, will I be able to resurrect in the first resurrection? Oh, I will not be able to qualify for it. So that means in every situation, no matter the circumstances you have to go through, your role is to make sure, your role is to make sure that you live a righteous life, whether people will mock at you, because the world, Christ told us that if the world hates you, just remember that it hated him. So if you were of the world, the world would have loved its of its own. But since you are not of the world, and he chose you out of the world, the world will hate you because of his namesake. So if you fear to be hated by the world for the namesake of Christ, that means you will be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. But if you really love Christ and you've decided to enter into this race of salvation, that means you will have to run a race with uncertainty, making sure that no matter what you'll face in the race, you have to be able to face it because you know you are going to win a crown that is unperishable or a crown that will last forever and never. So we want to see the characteristics of those people who are living in these times or the characteristics of we who are living in the end times have to be. How are we supposed to behave as a true Christian? So one, when we open in the book of Romans, chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, and the verse is and the verse is 9 to 21, the Bible says, Romans chapter 12, verse 9 to 21, it says, um, Let love be without hypocrisy. About what is evil and cling to what is good. So one of the qualifications of the people who are living in the last days, the first thing they have to do is to put hypocrisy aside. Hypocrisy is when you pretend that you love God and the fact is in your heart you are not interested. You don't have even the love of God. Most of us, when we meet our fellow friends, in Christ, we want to show that we are so humble, we want to show people that we are so holy, we live a righteous life, but the fact is inside of we, there is something we are hiding that is not really righteous. So that is what the Bible is trying to mean. Let us love, let our love be without hypocrisy and about what is evil, or let us hate what is evil and let us cling to what is good. So if you want to be a true ambassador of Christ in these last days, you have to make sure that you love, you, you have to be with love as your first priority, and you have to hate whatever is called sin. Whenever you see an act 
that is not just make sure that that you just know that that is evil and when you know that that is evil that means you are not supposed to cling and to it you are just supposed to let it go because the moment you decide to get in the way of that wicked way you'll make you may not know but you may be caught up into sin and you'll not be able to run out of that problem so two be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor giving preference to one another so another thing is we have to love one another no matter the consequences one of the things that uh god said is that if you love your brother you are willing to put or to lay aside your life for your brother that is a person who has a true love for his brother but when if you have a brother of yours and then that brother has a problem and you don't want to help that brother because your role is that you want to construct a house you want to buy some fancy fancy clothes and the money you have is just enough for that because of the problems your brother has the moment you pick on that money you won't be able to buy those fancy things you want that means the love you have is called is not the love that Christ meant the love that Christ meant is if you have something and that something you can use it to help your brother and then you don't use it that is love that is not love a true love is when you have something and someone comes who is in need of it and you are willing to face the consequence of you losing it and then you give it to someone who needs it despite the fact that all of you must be in need of it but as you a true christian in order for the light of the word of god to be shining you have to do what you have to do it you have to make sure that you are able to give your life into suffering and then leave the others to do what to to be joyful so not lagging in diligence fervent in spirit and serving the lord rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation continuing steadfastly in prayer most of us have a characteristics that when we are living a simple life or a life where we have whatever we ask from god we end up thinking that god is always just going to be good, doing good things in our lives and when some problem comes in our life then we shall begin questioning god why is this thing happening to me when you pray and then god does not answer your prayer you begin now undermining god or minimizing god that god is power is not working god does not exist what and what because of the problem you are going through but for me whenever i go into a certain problem or a certain situation this is the first thing i first think in my mind why am i suffering why is this thing happening to me before i judge god or before i put my tribulation or my situation into god's shoes i remember one thing that my grandparents did the adam and eve the first thing they did was disobedient the reason as to why we are suffering reason as to why people go to labor and then they die when they are laboring the reason as to why we have poor people the reason as to why we have sick people in the world is because of sin because of disobedience because we did what we disobeyed that is why god tells us in every situation as a true christian in these last days you have to be thankful no matter the situation you go through be fervent in prayer pray without ceasing but we have three answers that god always gives to people and then you have to be able to be thankful for all those prayers and one of the prayers sometimes you can pray to god and then god says ah let me give it to us to my ch- to my son or daughter so then in that situation you are so thankful because you prayed and your prayer was what was answered there are sometimes when we pray and then god says ah i know you need this but you wait this is not the time of it so when god says that i'm going to give you this but not in this time that means you have to be patient because patience is one of the characteristics of a true christian in this last day if you are not patient it is very difficult for you to be able to to live in these last days so another thing when you pray there is a time when god can say ah you're praying i've heard what you've prayed 
but this does not deserve to you or does not belong to you. So when we pray a prayer and then God does not answer that prayer, it doesn't mean that he's not listening. No. He says there is where he says that where do wars and quarrels from among you come from? Is it because you ask and you don't get? You get. The reason as for why sometimes we pray and we don't get what we have prayed for is because most of us, our prayers are always amiss. God says sometimes we pray when we want to do what? To fulfill the last of our needs. You get. Or we want to waste whatever God we have been praying for in the last of our pleasures, in the last of our needs. So when God says that inside your heart, whatever you're praying for, you're praying to, sus to sustain or to fulfill your desires or your pleasures and not him, that means as a true Christian, you have to live in the right shoes, in, in the right yes, shoes. That means he has to deny or he has not to answer that word that prayer because it is not good. Whatever he will give you, it may mislead you and you may go off the narrow way. So we have to be thankful in all, whatever we do, in everything, the way we walk, we have to be thankful with the Lord. Let us not complain. Let us serve God in truth and in spirit. Let us avoid worldly wisdom. Let us not make our souls so wise that we just pass on drunkards. Ah, this drunkard. Who can preach to the drunkard? So if you don't preach to the drunkard, who will preach to the drunkard? Those are the people that Christ went and stayed in, and then they asked him, why do you sit with the unrighteous? And then he told them, someone who is not sick does not need a doctor, but him who is sick. So our role is to make sure that whoever does not have this gospel of the truth or of light, let it be our responsibility to go out and reach unto those people. When you've gone to reach out to those people, pray and be assured of two answers. And when those answers come out, be thankful to God. Your role is to plant a seed of the word, not to change. Because you have no power to change someone. The only power you have is to change your soul. And then the power you have is to go and plant. When you preach to someone and then he is not responding to you, it's okay. But time will come and then the seed you've planted will reach a time and will sprout and that person will do what? Will be saved. So whenever we preach to someone, let us keep those people in prayer in order for God to always be guiding them. Yeah, in Jesus' name, may God bless you. Yes, uh, you you may pray and then call it a day. Okay. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for the gift of life that you've given unto us, Lord. Many have died, many have not been able to reach unto this day. Many had plans for today and many had plans for tomorrow. But the fact is they have not been able to make it further. We have a lot of plans. We have a lot of dreams that we want them to succeed, Lord. But if whatever we are planning, we do not consider you first, Lord. I know all that is against, Father. I pray in everything that we plan, may we put you as our first priority, Father. As we move out of our homes, wherever we are staying, Lord, to go and begin the day of this day, Father, we pray, may you walk with us, Father. May you send your angels to come and walk by our sides, Father. And Father, as you say that, no weapon fashioned upon your servants shall prosper. Whoever speaks a word that is not of good courage to us, Father, may you turn it into a blessing, Father. May we not be cursed, but may we always be blessed before your throne of mercy. And whenever we come onto your throne of mercy, as whenever we pray, we pray that Father, may you listen to our prayer and may our prayer already be accepted on your throne of mercy, Father. May your mercy be upon those people who are sick, people who are in certain situations that make them not to serve you in truth and spirit. May you visit them, Lord, at their point of need. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen.